Hey everyone, it's Emmett again. Welcome Tales from the Flipside family to, so you wanna open a comic shop. Uh, we're gonna start, uh, we talked about not doing it in chronological order, uh, but we are gonna start this second episode with the very, very beginning. Um, so I opened a business on a whim. I was uh, in a career that became a job. If you don't know the difference, it's pretty simple. Career has advancements. You're gonna go somewhere, a job is you're in the same place for the entirety. So <clears throat> at some point in my career, it had stalled out and it didn't look like I was gonna have be advanced. So uh, I was looking for some other thing to do. Uh, I've always had uh, entre entrepreneurial spirit, <laughs> uh, although I can't say it, I've had it. Uh, so yeah, so what I wanted to do was open a business and I did it on a whim and I started it right up and I didn't do any planning. And I believe that that was a huge mistake. So I want to start you out with uh, some, uh, probably the best resource in, in America is the SBA, the Small, Businessmen, the Small Business Administration, uh, federal government agency. Uh, there is a ton of resources. And one of the first ones you should use is uh, write your business plan. So they have a whole tutorial, um, templating, on the website, how to write a business plan. It takes you step by step. Uh, we're gonna put, um, it's sba.gov, it's pretty simple. You go there and then you just search, uh, write a business plan or business plans. And then you go in there and it's really good to have a blueprint of what you wanna do. And you can keep going back to it and you can um, take it to other people. They also have another program called SCORE which uh, you can find local executives from businesses who will actually help mentor you. So you can take them your business plan and have them read over it and they'll make suggestions and be uh, hopefully pretty critical about it. Because you know, if you're investing some money, you, you want somebody that's gonna have a real critical eye, somebody that's gonna uh, tell you, be honest with you and not just like pump you up and be your cheerleader. There's sometimes you need a cheerleader and there's sometimes you need a coach, right? Two diff very, very different people in your life. Um, I've probably needed a lot more coaches than, um, than cheerleaders. Uh, uh, not that I've had a lot of cheerleaders, but I'm just not a guy that responds <laughs> too much to that. I'd rather have somebody really giving me the, the straight guff on it. So yeah, so writing the business plan, I'm gonna be using my phone a lot because there's uh, a lot of websites, a lot of resources, and I wanna make sure that you get all the info uh, that you can and if I miss something um, that you had a question about throw it in the comments we'll we'll cover it in one of the shows I'm sure uh, it, and if not if I didn't have it in my plan to I'll add it to my plan that's you being my coach right so um, business plan will help you run your business it uh, picture business plan format that works for you so in Forbes Forbes of course well, if you go on search Forbes you know, it's a business magazine. They have a ton of stuff on their website. One of them was the top small businesses for small um, towns and cities. Um, one of them was a bookstore, which basically a comic book store is a bookstore. Um, they didn't go into, a, it did collectible bookstore, didn't make the list, but um, I, I'm saying they're pretty much the same thing. One of the things that I was most regret about uh, the business and that I'm in, and then in, uh, when I opened up, it was a very rundown city. There hadn't been a new business in many years. There really was nothing downtown about, except for a few antique stores and a gun shop and pizzerias. So when I opened up, I had an opportunity to put in uh, a food bar or a, um, a coffee station. And I didn't, because I didn't want to go through the hassle of learning the health department stuff. And like that was a big revenue stream I missed out on that I'm very, very um, dis uh, disappointed in myself, regret, it's a regret. Uh, but two years after I opened, a new store opened up and they added a coffee bar. They're actually like a home goods store, like, um, fancy knickknacks and stuff like that, but they added a coffee bar and that's probably the largest part of their revenue. 
is, is that coffee, uh, you know, doing three, 400 coffees a day at, you know, $4 with like an incredible markup. Uh, so yeah, that we kind of really missed the boat on that. There's a couple of uh, comic shops out there that do have a uh, food bar or coffee. Um, one of the ones I'm really hoping, uh, I'm gonna reach out to her, um, is the Pulp 716 out in Buffalo. Uh, she does bubble tea and uh, I really would love to talk to her about that and talk to her about what the profit margins are on, on that and, and how much people that don't buy comics uh, come through and then how many people she can convert. That's the other another thing is getting people through your door. So if I had a coffee bar, you're gonna put more people through your door than people that just look through the window and go, oh, that's just comics or that's just toys uh, or collectibles. So that's when you're making your business plan, think of a lot of these things. Look, do a lot of research, which I didn't do. Uh, my wife was kind of nagging me about how many boxes of comics I had around the house. And she says, what are you gonna do with all these comics? I said, open a comic shop. And then I did. Uh, and uh, we're also gonna start talking a little bit about what type of business you're gonna open, whether it's gonna be sole proprietorship, LLC, there's a couple of different types of LLC, or a corporation, there's a couple of different types of corporations. Um, most predominant one being an S Corp. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that here in, in a little bit, but uh, I started out as a sole proprietor. Another huge regret, another big problem. Uh, but like when you're doing it on a whim, uh, it, it was the easiest, fastest way to, to open. And I really encourage you not to open a business on a whim. Uh, it probably put us three or four years behind the curve, but here we are seven years later and still standing. So it wasn't ter too terrible or traumatic or catastrophic, but uh, we'll go through some of the catastrophic stuff we did go through. Then also the SBA has, let me just pull up the uh, other website. The, like I said about the SCORE business uh, mentoring program, SCORE is um, a great program. We had our, our little city here at Port Jervis, New York actually had SCORE come in for all the new business. I was open about two years. There was two new businesses that were just opening up and there was a couple of other entrepreneurs that were thinking about opening businesses in Port Jervis. And they had a program, it didn't cost much, but it was required, they were gonna do a grant for $30,000. Um, and if then you met their criteria after five years, that $30,000, you didn't have to make a payment on it. It was gonna be free, uh, free and clear. So we did the program, I think it was, $93 or $193, something like that. It wasn't a lot of money. It was a great program. It was, I think 18 weeks, something like that. But it did, it went soup to nuts. We wrote the business program, uh, business plan together through it. It was a really good program, but I'd already been open for two years. So I really should have taken that program before we opened, uh, but they're out there. You probably have a local one in your county um, or maybe even in your city. If you're in a bigger city, you'll, you'll probably have one right in your city. Um, ours is not too far away, but our, actually our, our little city brought, these, brought SCORE in because they wanted to revitalize the downtown. It was important. After I came in, uh, some people had started to talk about and try to open businesses in, in the city of Port Jervis. And they wanted to make sure people had a leg up. I mean, it is great to have your local government involved, not involved in, but cheering for, There's a cheer, they were cheerleaders for uh, small businesses revitalizing the downtown. Um, if, if you're from New York, anywhere in the upstate New York area, there is city upon city, small towns that their Walmart has closed down all the small businesses. And um, that's starting to revert now and one of the best businesses I think for revitalizing is a comic book gaming store. Uh, you get people to come together, gather in an area, and um, I did a whole show on it on my channel. Uh, you can always go back and look at that, but I'm not gonna go too much into that. <clears throat> um, but it is, it is a uh, excellent way to get information you also, if you're planning on opening in a particular area, you should go to the mayor um, or 
you know, whoever the town leader is, there's all kinds of different governments, villages and towns that have, some have mayors, some have um, other, they have boards. It's, it's different from place to place. Um, maybe if you're lucky enough to be, I'm going to look at one of my other resources here. If you're lucky to be in the five states that don't, uh, don't have sales tax, bingo. So uh, there's Alaska, Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, and Oregon. They do not have state sales tax. So uh, re really good place to be. Uh, if you were living in those states, you were thinking about opening a small business, there's a leg up. You don't have to be charging sales tax. The, uh, but like I said, you should get in contact with the local government. You should be talking about what they allow, what the permitting is. Uh, there was a big deal when I first came in is about the size of our sign. So they had these huge restrictions on how big your sign could be. Um, ours was uh, 20 square, right? So you could be two feet high by 10 feet wide, but could be five by four if you wanted a square sign. Uh, rectangle sign two by 10 or any other combination of that. But that was it. You also couldn't put any uh, signs in your window that would be considered um, a real sign. Like you could put something temporary, uh, but you couldn't put anything permanent. That since has changed. They lightened it up. They found that to try to work with the businesses to make them as successful as possible because we are paying sales tax that is coming back to the city, which is helping them revitalize. Uh, we were able to get all brand new sidewalks downtown uh, through uh, the, our government, uh, our local government getting uh, benefits from the federal government and grants and putting in, which you know makes people wanna come downtown when it looks nice. Uh, we have a beautiful fountain now. So when you see this type of stuff happening, or if you want to be the, the little pebble of sand in that becomes the pearl, if you want to be the beginning, and then you can go to all the meetings and talk to uh, all the politicians about, hey, let's move forward. Let's revitalize the downtown. Let's, let's bring people back to our city. I was here for many years before I opened my business. And I was always disappointed that there was nothing really too much to do downtown. One restaurant, a couple of pizzerias, and, and that was about it. So I took the jump, I took the leap. But I'm telling you not to leap. I'm telling you to do a lot of research first and make as many connections as you can. And uh, next we're gonna go over the computer and we're gonna talk about uh, starting your business. All right, so we've talked to death about the business plan and how important it is. Um, and that's why I'm gonna say it again. It's very, very important. Uh, you should do it. Uh, now we're gonna go into uh, set it, actually setting up your business. And before you go in and jump in and get your LLC, you gotta choose a business name. And uh, again, I use a Forbes resource and it's 12 tips for naming your business. Uh, you can search it yourself, but I'm gonna go through them really quick. So one of the first things you wanna do is to avoid uh, hard to spell names. Um, if you want to name the business after yourself and make it a family business, I mean, that's up to you. But if you have a really tough Russian or Greek name, it might be very tough for people to find you. And that's important that people can find you and it's easy to search on the internet. Uh, don't pick a name that could be uh, limiting as your business grows. So, I named my business Haven for Heroes because I had envisioned building it out and in the future franchising it. Maybe still happen in the future, but uh, if it doesn't, it doesn't. But I wanted like some really iconic name that uh, kind of stuck and kind of had a, a certain flavor. So that was my choice. But I think further down the list, it'll talk about some things that I didn't do in, my, in the name of the business that is recommended. If you just name your store Joe's Comics, uh, then you start, you decide, hey, I'm gonna do uh, gaming because uh, I have the space and it, it's gotten hot. Well, then you're Joe's Comics and a lot of people as they drive by, they'll go, oh, do they have gaming? Uh, it's a comic shop, it doesn't do gaming. So that's what they're talking about, about limiting. So number three on their list is conduct a thorough internet search. You definitely do not want to be sued <laughs> 
for trademark infringement, copyright infringement. You don't want to start getting geared up and all excited about your name and then find out that your state already has a business named that and you can't use that name because uh, it's tied to your tax ID. And then the next one is <clears throat> get the .com or Dene, uh, domain name. So yeah, I can't get my domain name. I, I didn't think about that when I opened my business. Um, a lot of people don't care there because they're like, oh, I'm not really going to move into having my own website. It's nowadays it's so tough to generate people to your website uh, to tra get the traffic to your website. Maybe not as important as it used to be, but if you're thinking about doing uh, large scale online is going to be your business model, then you're going to need the dot com and then you'll figure out, I guess, you know, how to get traffic to your website. You want to search that as well as your state's um, business uh, website on the on the state you can when you're getting your tax ID number, except for the five states that don't require tax, you have to search. You can search the business name when you're when you're setting up your business. So you do that there and you can also do it on GoDaddy. There's a lot of you can even write a search it on just search it on Google and it'll come up with any dot coms. Use a name that conveys some type of meaning. A lot of people said when I first opened, I was just, com I really was just comics. Um, I kind of was a comic store that started doing magic that's now a magic store that kind of does comics. <laughs> Not really, I, I, have, I still have a lot of comics and we do weekly stuff, but uh, the main part of our business has been magic in our community. But so they're talking about Joe's Comics conveys what you do, but maybe it's Joe's Comics and gaming or uh, just call it comics and gaming uh, or comics, gaming and collectibles. So there's a lot of different things you can do there. Now, the sixth tip they have is conduct a trademark search. We already talked about that. You want to make sure that uh, it's not a copyrighted name or a trademark name. More impo importantly, the trademark name. You go to USPTO.gov and the, ser uh, the searches in there, they'll also give you some ideas uh, about trademarking if you want to trademark your name. Uh, my the name of my business is not currently trademarked. Not sure if I could. There is a couple other. There's a veterans business. Uh, there's a veterans not for profit that has the same name as uh, my business. So conduct a, a secretary of state search. So go to your local state's uh, website, whatever state you're in, and that's where you would search for uh, the business names. Assess if the name is catchy. <laughs> like if you like it, does it mean it's that everybody will like it. When you meet people, you can tell them, I was thinking about opening the, this business and you give them the business name. It's hard, again, remember we're talking about coaches and cheerleaders, it's hard. You gotta go and find your coaches, right? So you want somebody to, when you, you hey, you're really excited about the business name and you tell them and they're like, I don't get it. Uh, or, you know, if you find those coaches, when you tell them something and they give you positive response, you know that's honest. So you know that you're on the right track. When you get it from a cheerleader, are they being nice? Are they just trying to take care of my feelings instead of giving me the honest answer? So, I mean, I, you can go out. I mean, if it's a, you're doing a small business, I wouldn't hire a company, a consulting company to take it to a, uh, a focus group, but try to find your own focus group. Um, there's lots of ways to do that. You can go to local events that your city's putting on and hey, you could even have a contest to name your company and you'll get a lot of good ideas and then see which ones are close to yours. There's a lot of different ways to do it. We kind of went through, get feedback on the name, have a couple of names so that you can give it, uh, give a chance for people to, to uh, do almost multiple choice, what they like and don't like about each name. <laughs> One of their tips is make sure the name sounds good when it's said aloud. Um, okay, I don't think that's super important, but I think it's probably important uh, enough to, to be on the list. Uh, I think they were kind of running out of, so I think they probably should have stopped at 10, but there's 12. Uh, there's uh, resources available for brainstorming. The visual, thesaurus.com, gives you visual around a keyword, uh, which so when you, when you put a word that you're trying to use, uh, it'll give you pictures and that, that's what people will picture in their mind when uh, you are, um, when they say your business name. Shopify business uh, name generator. I'm not a big fan of name generators, but 
it may give you ideas, right? So you might be able to pick up some things. There's uh, namemesh.com, provides a startup company, name generator, and nameanum.com uh, is another name generator. And then their 12th tip was, make sure you are personally happy with the name. You take all this advice, you, you talk to a lot of people, and you know, you kind of use the name generators, and you've come up with something that a lot of people like, and they say that that's a good name, but you don't personally like it. Listen, it's your business, you're gonna have to live with it. You really need to just go with your gut. Maybe there's a second or third choice that you liked a lot more and were disappointed it wasn't number one. Listen, the third best choice is still better than the 10th worst choice, right? That's, a, that's also important to make sure that you are making yourself happy, right? because you're gonna be in this business hopefully very long term. Let's, let me bring up my uh, backup to how to start a business. Uh, so after you've chosen the name, you wanna go uh, choose a business entity and register your business. So like I spoke about earlier, I was a sole proprietorship. It was very difficult, I still have a full-time job. It was very difficult to run my business and my full-time job. And I hired an employee and year one was great, it was uh, love and roses and um, it's fantastic. Year two, um, business started to falter quite a bit. I discovered that the great employee was stealing from me. So I had to get rid of that employee. Um, my son had just moved back into the area. So I got my son to come to work for me, which I later then gave him half the business. We had uh, a great employee that had been working for us for a while that uh, me and my son had agreed to hire. What we decided was to give him 10% each of our business, ownership of the business, and give him 20% and make him an owner to kind of motivate to bring the business to the next level. And it, it turned out great. Uh, sadly, my son had deci has decided to uh, move on. Uh, he wanted to do something else. It really wasn't his passion. He really helped me out for the four years he was here. Um, I bought him out and we actually sold that portion to a regular customer who wanted to be in this business. And uh, so now we we're back to three partners again. But we couldn't do that as a sole proprietor. You can bring partners on in an LLC, but what we had decided to do uh, when me and my son had decided to bring the third partner in was to set up an S Corp. So we are an S Corp. The three most common businesses will be an LLC, limited liability company, not corporation. It's not a corporation. S Corp is a corporation. Corporation corporations are corporations, <laughs> but uh, it's a limited liability company. Um, when you're a sole proprietor, there's a lot of nasty things that can happen to you. Uh, somebody could slip and fall in your business and they can take your house. It, it, you have all the liability of the business, all the debt, everything is yours, your personal self, and everything that, you're, that you own is tied to the business. Um, your taxes, everything is, the business is done on your taxes. Now, if you're gonna be, uh, if you're in a very small market, you wanna start a uh, comic book st shop and you just wanna run it, it's just gonna be, that's, you're not gonna have another job. That's gonna be your business. That's how you're gonna make your living. Sole proprietor may work for you. Um, I would suggest using those resources at the SBA to figure out if that is best for you. It's very cheap to start either an LLC or an S Corp. Uh, you can do it online. There's um, LegalZoom, Rocket Lawyer. There's a ton of online forms, um, lawyer businesses uh, online that will do that paperwork for you for a very small fee. You, if you're in a small town, there may be a local lawyer that will do it for you for a small fee. Our actually, our CPA, uh, did our S Corp paperwork for us. And it was uh, not an expensive fee, but it, you know, all that, as they say, your mileage may vary. Uh, all of that will be different from depending on where you live. If you're in a very low cost of living area, it, the price of, will be very low. If you're in a very high cost of living area, the price will be more. So you take that into consideration.
when you go on to your state's website, if you if the state has sales tax, you set up for a sales tax ID number, you put your business name in there and you apply for your business uh, license, uh, tax license. There is no fee for that. They will send you your tax ID number. In New York, it's a, it's a pink, it's a little pink slip. You have to have it up on the wall or somewhere where you can show it when a tax, uh, when the tax man shows up. That's in New York, your state may differ. Uh, but use your state's uh, websites for all the information that you uh, need. Best thing is if you're gonna have an employee, make sure at the same time that you're going to the federal government and getting your EIN number so that you can um, set up when you do have an employee so you can set up for all the taxes you have to pay to the federal government, FICA and all that for your employee. I had to do that later on when we changed to an S Corp because the, what we were doing with employees uh, at the time was very different. Very old school mom and pop. There's a lot of places to set up your LLC or your S Corp. You, you don't have to do that paperwork if you're gonna be a sole proprietor. The only thing is then as a sole proprietor, they have something called a DBA, doing business as. So your business name is actually not your taxed name. Your tax name will be your name. That's what you're gonna put in there when you do your tax ID number. It will be your name and your social security number will be your sales tax number. So you wanna move on from that if you can. It's really not a lot of money. Uh, I think LLCs was like $200 and I think I, we paid $400 for our S Corp. So you wanna obtain any uh, permits, licenses, uh, employer information and insurance. Uh, I'm gonna do an episode on insurance, well, a partial episode on insurance. Uh, so we're not gonna get into that now, but it is important to know, and it will be part in the beginning because you wanna be insured as soon as you open your doors. Your city may require you to have insurance before you open your doors and the type of insurance that you'll need. Again, this is making networking, contacting your local uh, government, uh, city, village, town uh, on their per permitting. We needed to get, when we got our, uh, we had to have the building inspector come through, make sure that we had fire extinguishers in the right place, make sure that our aisles were wide enough uh, to be ADA compliant. There's a lot of stuff that you don't even think about when you're pie in the sky, um, pipe dream, thinking about opening a business uh, like I was, <laughs> who didn't, didn't know, right? So in New York, uh, we got a 99, capa 99 person capacity. Uh, in our store for 3,000 square feet. If we got 100, if we, instead of 99, why was it 99 and not 100? What would one more person do? Well, the building inspector has to do particular paperwork and take particular me measurements and file it with the state if you're over 99 people. So that's why we're at 99 and not 100. But we were originally uh, only at 75, so we were able to bump it up because with some of our magic tournaments in our early years, we were reaching 80, uh, 80 people playing. So, you know, with people watching and customers coming in and out, we were coming close to that 100 number. So uh, you needed to, you know, make sure that you're in, you don't want the fire chief coming in when you're in the middle of a tournament and shutting you down. So. You also, we also had to have the fire chief come and, and inspect our fire alarm and stuff like that. So these are all things you really have to look into and think about, you know? Uh, and these are outside of your business plan. This doesn't need to be in your business plan, but this needs to be in the plan, uh, finding out all the stuff that you need to have ready to open your doors on your opening day. So, now, one of the, the tips is they talk about securing startup funding. Okay, I shoestringed this. I, I had my own collection of comics. Uh, and I had a little windfall of money that I didn't even spend. I had like 10 grand and I didn't even spend all of it on opening the store. Um, I kind of kept it in the bank and used it as I needed to. So that was my startup funding. But the SBA on their website, they also have all the different funding, all the different grants also. You may be able to get a grant. They have grants for women. They have grants for minorities. They have uh, grants for uh, different types of business. They have grants for certain areas. Like if you want to open a business, let's say you're in a rundown city and there it hasn't been a new business in a certain time, they have grants for that type of stuff. So do your research on your grants because free money is better than regular money. Everybody knows that, right? Free money is the best money. Get a business bank account uh, and business credit card. I own everything in the store. 
I, I and my partners own everything in the store. Uh, we do not do anything on uh, credit, but you may want to. You might want a, a, a revolving credit card uh, from your bank, but it, you do have to have a business account. If it's a sole proprietor, it's easy. You just go in yourself, sign up for a bank account, tell them it's for a business. You give them your DBA, doing business as, and um, boom, you've got an account. As an S Corp, I have to bring them my corporation paperwork, my seal. I have to give them, bring all the stuff and sit down. And partners have to have, to set up a bank account, you have to have a certain percentage ownership to set up the bank account, or you need a second partner to come with you. Contact your local bank to find out what you need for that. But that's an important part. You do need to have that bank. Kick off your marketing plan. Uh, we are kind of running long, so um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have a show on marketing plan because it's really important. Uh, I basically just opened my doors and I did little or no marketing other than putting uh, coming soon in a window for three months. Uh, that generated some little excitement from the kids that rode in the park, rode around in the parking lot. So we're gonna go into that more uh, in depth, but I think that's a good stopping point. If you have any questions on any of the material we talked about today, please put it in the comments. If you think I need to go more in depth, if you wanna see what the website looks like, uh, we can uh, go deeper into that. We can also add later on some of the links uh, they won't be in the, today they won't be down below, but uh, if people are really, because uh, sba.gov is pretty kind of easy to find, uh, and then the search bar, you can search for everything. And they do have really step-by-step -step stuff. They have a lot of videos on there. It's a great, great resource uh, that a lot of people do not know about. Stick with us. If you're interested in opening a comic shop, if you're interested in opening a small retail shop, Come along for this journey. Uh, I'm going to try to give you guys the best and most information you can get uh, in any one of these shows. Uh, thanks for tuning in and check out my, I got this in Baltimore. This is my Tales from the Slip Flip Side t-shirt. I've been watching it all night. This is an awesome t-shirt. Um, I, I really appreciated getting it because I, I love t-shirts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Take care. Keep reading comics.